Welcome to the Dentamax Tip of the Week. In this week's tip, I want to focus in on some of the financial reports that Dentamax has available to you. I'm going to start by pulling up our reports, and I've marked all of these as favorites. Within Dentamax, there are essentially three different types of statements or walkouts, as well as aging reports that you have available to you. If you notice, you'll see the word anticipated quite a bit. We also have responsibility and standard as well. These three different types of statements will show you different numbers for the patient's account. So essentially, you'll need to decide which type of statement or report is best suited for the type of practice that you're running. Once you've decided that, I recommend you go ahead and add that to your favorites list. Let's go ahead and start with the walkout. The walkout statement is typically given to the patient on their way out the door from your office on the day that their visit occurred. Under walkout, once again, we have anticipated, responsibility, and standard. Each option of report also has a family option. The ones that are not marked as family are specific to one patient only. The family option is gonna show you everyone linked up under that one account as a whole. The nice thing about the family report as well is that if we look at this sample report, you will see that it will display whose name is linked to that service code item also. So going back here, just to lay out what the different types of reports are. And when I say type, I'm specifically referring to the word anticipated, responsibility, or standard. The standard walkout is best used when a patient has no insurance or are self-pay patients, or if you just want to reflect the total balance on the account. If we go ahead and print preview the standard walkout, and I'll go ahead and choose my cash patient, Dr. Huber. We'll pull up his walkout statement, and you'll notice the statement date up here at the top, as well as his chart number. Then it has his name and address, and then it has his name here in the procedure completed. You'll notice that there is no date listed, and that is because the walkout statement is to be used on the day of their visit. So the day of their visit is going to be listed up here at the top. Basically, what we're focusing on are the numbers listed on these different types of statements and reports. The standard walkout statement is essentially going to show you a patient's balance regardless of whom owes it. So the balance on Dr. Huber's account is $17.90, so this walkout statement is going to ask for $17.90. If Dr. Huber did have insurance, this statement would still ask for the $17.90 to be due. So the most common use of the standard statement is once again for the cash patient or someone that you just want to give a statement to that's going to show their total amount of charges on their account and their balance. If we go ahead and look at the anticipated statement, we'll print preview that and choose Mr. Flanders. The anticipated statement is going to take into account what the insurance is expected to pay based on the insurance plan details such as the coverage table, the maximum benefits, if the deductible has been met, etc. So once again, we're looking at the walkout statement, and Ned actually did not have any charges for today's date, so you're not seeing anything listed here. However, I can still print the walkout statement for him, and it'll show his total account balance, which is the 800, and then we have his pending insurance listed. The amount due is only $50, and this is because we are anticipating Ned only owes $50 out of this 800, based on what we know about his insurance. So if you have patients that come in and pay their estimated patient portion, and if Ned had done so as well, his amount due would show zero, but it would still show the pending insurance claim and the total family balance would have dropped down to 750 as well. So essentially the anticipated report, be it a walkout, a statement that you mail, or the aging report, is going to show the patient's estimated portion that they owe, not their total account balance, like the standard statement or report. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at our responsibility walkout. If we print preview this, I will pull up Mr. Homer Simpson. Take a look at that walkout statement. Today's charges was for an occlusal guard, and we billed out $150 to his account for that. 
the amount due based on the responsibility statement for today's visit is zero. The responsibility statement is going to remove any pending claims out of the equation when asking for a total amount due. So prior to today, Homer had a balance forward of $40. If we include that in today's charges, we have a total family balance of $190. The $40 already has claims attached that have been closed and a partial payment had previously been made of $10. Therefore, the balance that this statement is asking for is only $30 because any of the pending insurance is removed from this equation, unlike the anticipated statement. If we had run an anticipated statement, it would have shown today's charges with an amount due if this procedure code was not covered at 100%. The responsibility is only asking what the computer knows for a fact that the patient owes at this moment instead of anticipating what their balance might be. Those are essentially the three different types of statements and reports we have in the computer. So aside from the walkout, the other places you'll see these three different types occur would be in the regular monthly statement that you send out and also the patient aging reports. So once again, we have anticipated, responsibility, and standard. You also have the option to run it by family instead of per patient if you prefer to look at this report as a whole rather than scrolling through patients individually. So you can see how it's critical to understand these different three types of statements available to you and decide which type of statement is going to work best for your practice and suit your needs. Some offices prefer to bill after the insurance is cleared, which would be the responsibility statement. Some offices prefer to ask for the estimated patient portion as soon as the service is completed, which would be the anticipated statement. And other offices maybe don't deal in insurances as much, or perhaps you just want the patient to know this is the balance on your account and should the insurance not cover it, this is what you'll owe if you're not contracted with any insurance company. One last discriminating factor, aside from being able to run this per individual or per family, is the CC that you notice here. The CC simply stands for credit card, which will give you a credit card box on that statement that you choose to mail out so that the patient can pay you in return by credit card if you do accept payment that way. I hope this week's tip of the week has been helpful in assisting you in choosing what the best type of statement or financial report your office should should run. If you should need any further assistance regarding this matter, of course feel free to contact Dentamax at 1-800-704-8494. Thank you!